Uh, with Ian's weight behind my persistent questioning, um, they gave way and said, you can have it. Uh, it's quite a long story, and we haven't got time for it, and quite amusing at times how the department reacted to being questioned on this, because I discovered it was one of those issues that, and to my mind, they're very dangerous. Everybody knows this is a good thing. And therefore, when I asked, what's your evidence, I got flannel, and I got other people's opinions, and I got reviews, and I said, no, I actually want some studies on that. Oh, they said, oh, really? And, and time went by. And I don't think they knew at that stage how to access them or what they were. I got them in the end, um, and the answers used to come with little bits of fluoride propaganda at the end, even if the question was nothing about it. Um, fluoridation uh, is enormously effective and totally safe. You know, I didn't ask that or <laughs> particularly want to hear it. So there was clearly a department view. Anyway, we got the systematic review, and Ian was very much a key player in that. This was 1999, and he got me onto the advisory board. I was quite alarmed that I'd be out of my depth, I remember there. And this was, this was what made it, uh, in I think his opinion, um, a, a, a very high-class operation. Um, systematic reviews have to review absolutely everything. They work to set protocols. It's thoroughly transparent. The website was open to the world all the way through it. And overarching it was an advisory board consisting specifically of some opponents, some supporters, and some independent scientists of high calibre. Ian was one, George Davis Smith of Bristol was another, Trevor Sheldon of the York Department of Health Sciences chaired the whole board, and Jos Kleinen, who talked to us, was, was the lead reviewer. And this was at York, University of York, the NHS Centre for Reviews and Dissemination. And they spent getting on for a year, trawling the whole world literature, translating what they needed to translate. Found quite a lot of studies, but pretty few that meet, met their entrance criteria. Um, and we need to have a look at what it found, because it was really, in view of what had been claimed, quite surprising. Um, I hope people can see at the back there. Um, they found... Perhaps I should preface it by saying that the, their main impression was how weak the evidence was for something that had been claimed so strongly. Um, uh, not, one, not one good quality study in the whole world literature of 50 years. Um, so they couldn't say anything with complete confidence. They thought it probably worked to reduce care aids by a great deal less than had been claimed by dentists and others. There were 26 reasonable studies, and the thing on the right is their validity score of how, um, how valid um, the studies were for answering the, the, the questions asked. Um, they say to have real confidence in something, you need 8 out of 8 or 7 out of 8. Probably has an effect over and above toothpaste and so on. This is a key political one, whether it reduces inequalities between social groups and geographical areas. Uh, everybody wants to help the disadvantaged, so it's a really key thing. That was the worst evidence of the whole review. You can see um, the, the, the low number and quality of the studies there. In fact, there weren't any studies at all that met their predefined criteria. They had to lower the bar to admit some. There's a possibility that it might be helpful, but they described it in another place as weak, uh, unreliable and contradictory. Um, this, because of the number of studies and the trend there, though they weren't very strong ones, suggested with the dose-response relationship that as the fluoride concentration went up, more teeth got discoloured. Most of it is mild, but some of it, they said one in eight child in a fluoridated area had really unsightly teeth. As for harms, the big thing that those who opposed fluoridation used to say, that it caused this, that and the other, uh, no such joy for them um, because the evidence wasn't good enough across the board to conclude anything at all. May or may not cause. Bone problems are the obvious ones because fluoride goes to teeth and bones. On the other hand, there were some studies which suggested that it, it improved bone strength. Cancer's obviously a worry and there were some others. Um, the best way to categorise those, and I've been having a fight with the department about how to, what's the correct interpretation there in the light of what York said, and the best way to look at it is no clear association with any other harms. So the scope and policy to play that how you like, you can say that um, what you can't say is that there's no evidence of harm, and that's what the government has had since. 
but it's, it's mixed evidence and that's enough, that satisfies some people because no harm has been proved. Others say, well, if you haven't even done the safety work, you're hardly even at the starting gate. So limited quantity and quality, not one good study. And another unusual thing that the, 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 the study, the um, review leader told us was that it was strange that most of the studies they looked for just looked for benefits and they hadn't looked at harms at the same time. So that was what the York Review said, and that is now 10 years ago. Um, the scientists involved had no doubt that that was not, not just the best review, but at that time the only reliable source of evidence that there was um, in the world, effectively, for the, for the benefits or disbenefits um, to, uh, to human health, because it looked at, at, at human studies only and water fluoridation.